Hi, my name is Andrea and I'd like to share my DNA story with you. I was born Andrea Lynn Combs in Johnson City, New York on September 20th, 1970. When I was born, my father was on an aircraft carrier in the Mediterranean serving with the Marines. My mother was, I believe, employed for Endicott Johnson Shoes. Um, a local company that um, built our area. Um, I know that when I was first born my father wasn't around. My mother had signed the birth certificate in the hospital and put his name on it. When he came home um, they had been in a relationship since they were 16. He, they were now 20 years old and they broke up shortly after I was born and we moved back with my grandparents up on the hill. Well, he never had anything to do with me as I was growing up. Um, I was always told he was too busy with his other family that he had remarried into after my parents divorced. They divorced when I was two, but I believe they were broken up since I was a few months old. Um, so he never was around. I know he went, they went to family court. He was ordered to pay support for me. Um, he had a hard time doing that between being unemployed. He had been released from the Marines on medical discharge. Um, and he just had some habits he couldn't kick after he had gotten out of the Marines. Um, he was a drug user. He was an alcoholic which put stress on their relationship so that was pretty much why they had split up. Um, I had my maternal grandparents that helped raise me and my uncles, my three uncles. Um, Mom did what she could to be a, you know, as a single parent to raise me and she remarried when I was six years old, six or seven years old. Um, I had a younger sister that was born when I was eight and you know I was raised with my stepfather my stepfather and my whom I thought was my biological father was no nowhere in the picture he didn't want anything to do with me I was always told his parents didn't want anything to do with me I don't I didn't know why um, as I grew older, my stepfather actually knew my birth certificate father and from the local bars. And he always told my stepfather and everybody that he knew that I wasn't his child. I thought this was just to um, avoid paying support and, you know, kind of releasing him from any kind of responsibilities of me. Well, when I was about 16, he told me, he had called my grandmother and he had told my grandmother on the phone that I could go to college through him and he had a vehicle for me and you know of course I was excited because I'd never known him at all. I only had one memory of him when I was four years old but um, none of that came true. Had I known I could have went through college through his GI Bill but I didn't know that at the time. So here we go to when I was 18 and graduated, I decided to contact his mother because she was local and I didn't know where he was. So I had looked her up in the phone book and I'd given her a call and I told her who I was and she told me that her son, Michael, did not have any daughters named Andrea. So I was confused on that. I thought, well, she just, you know, she never wanted anything to do with me as a child. So she's just in denial and, you know, just didn't want anything to do with me. And I was just trying to reach out to her and try to find him, trying to find Michael. Well, after a few phone calls later, um, go to when I was 20 years old. By about two years later, I was on my own. Um, I had a boyfriend and I was planning on starting my own family. Well, I had gotten a hold of her another time and 
she had actually agreed to meet with me and when I went down there to visit her I didn't know this because I didn't know where my birth certificate father was he was actually in town um I had went down to the meter and I sat talking with her for a while had coffee and you know just talking about everything you know, all my life and whatnot and what was going on and she was telling me a little bit about the family and um, my birth certificate father had knocked on the door he came in and I introduced myself and um, it was kind of bittersweet because I thought I saw uh, physical traits that we both shared we both had the tooth gap so <laughs> um, I thought well, okay well this has got to be my father you know I didn't have any reason to figure think that he wasn't well I tried to form a relationship with him um, shortly after meeting my paternal grandmother she uh, developed cancer and died within four months of me meeting her um, I didn't know uh, I tried to keep a relationship with Michael and I'll just continue to call him Michael instead of birth certificate father. Um, Michael and I had a strained relationship not only because I didn't know him but also because of the fact that he was still a drug user and an alcoholic and with me wanting to start a family um, about a month before month or two before my his mother passed I had found out I was pregnant for my first child so I was excited and I when I had told Michael that I was pregnant I found out I was pregnant he asked me if I wanted to go smoke marijuana with him what a way for your supposedly father to celebrate with you is to ask if you want to go smoke drug smoke marijuana um, I wasn't into any of that I had done that you know my life when I was younger but now that I was planning a family I knew I had to you know be clean and everything and make sure I had a healthy baby so I didn't really want to see him too often um, I did talk to him a few times visit him a few times one of the times I did go down to meet to talk with him and see him he had told me that I had a half brother well I had asked my mother about this and she told me that the half brother that he might be talking about is somebody that he had babysat for I don't know if it was before me or after me after I was born um, that this woman probably had <clears throat> a child through him so began my questioning well, okay well I know I have a half sister through him who was I think 10 years younger than me um, now I possibly have a brother I have one sister that I was I grew up with with my mother and so hearing that I might have a brother I was excited because I'd never had any brothers and I always wanted a brother you know all my friends that seemed like had brothers and they were cool you know so I wanted you know I wanted to have a brother well over the years this is from oh I'd say 1991 through the 2000s um, I always wanted to know where this brother was he told me his name was Matthew he didn't know where he was or actually how old he was or anything he was known Michael was known to be a pathological liar um, he told me many lies over the years uh, from that he was in Vietnam and a tunnel rat and which he was never he never stepped foot in Vietnam he was only on the aircraft carrier in the Mediterranean I do have his uh, military records to confirm that um, so here I decide you know okay well I want to try to find this brother well fast forward to let's see well okay go to 2003 he passed away he died of complications from hepatitis C and cirrhosis of the liver um, those were conditions due to his drug use and alcoholism um, his obituary my mother had called me that day to tell me that she'd seen the obituary in the paper 
and I wasn't contacted by anybody to let me know that he, you know anything had happened to him. So or that he was even in the hospital. Um, the obituary did not mention me at all. It said that he had three daughters, one which was his biological daughter, and two which were his stepchildren. Um, I decided to go to the funeral to um, pay my last respects to him, even though you know we had a strained relationship. I did this. You know, I had two children by then, and I didn't have him in part of their life because of his habits, and I didn't want to put any stress on my, ch on my children over that. I wanted to keep things as healthy for them as I could. So, I went to the funeral. I felt odd. Um, but some of the guys that were there that were friends of his at the bar recognized me because I had sent him one of my senior class pictures from high school and they recognized me and um, you know I, I wasn't treated bad I was you know I sat there on the opposite side of his other daughter but you know I, I, I made it through that and um, he was cremated I don't know whatever happened to his ashes I he had been remarried and his wife had passed away shortly after he did so I don't know if she got the ashes or if his children his other daughter got the ashes or were there so anyway um fast forward to 2018 um i had been talking to my oldest daughter who is an adult now um that i had wanted to get a dna test i've been wanting to get a dna test since ancestry brought them out a few years prior prior and I couldn't afford it at the time, so for Christmas in 2018, she gifted me the Ancestry DNA kit. I took the test. I was so excited. I was wanted to find out more about my family roots. I had been doing Ancestry online through Ancestry.com and studying genealogy for over 25 years. So I had an extensive um, pedigree online and with his family and my mother's side of the family. And I found out, you know, like my roots, my mother's side was mostly Pens Pennsylvania Dutch, excuse me, and Ger uh, which was German and, um, um, what do you call it? from Holland, um, I can't think of the name right now, but anyway, um, and my grand, my, my maternal grandfather's family came from Lithuania and Poland. So I knew I had some Eastern uh, European roots. Um, I'd always felt that way, you know. I never questioned any of that. Uh, my grandmother on my mother's side, my maternal grandmother, her family was Pennsylvania Dutch, and there was some Native American Indian in there somewhere that I had heard about. And on Michael's side of the family, I was told they were from um, Romania, Romania and Poland. So I, you know, made sense, you know, I grew up in an area where there was a lot of Polish families and Ukrainian, uh, Lithuanian, a lot of Eastern European. So <clears throat> I did the DNA and I sent my test in around the end of December. <clears throat> February 2nd, I get my results back. I go online and... First thing I check is, you know, my heritage, my cultural heritage. And I find out, yes, there is a lot of Eastern European, uh, a lot of Russian, Romanian, Poland, Lithuanian. Not as much Romanian as I thought. Um, some, I was always, I was always told by Michael's side also there was um, Irish. Well, I didn't see any Irish on there, so I was kind of like, okay, well, you know. Maybe it's just a small portion, and that's why it's not shown. So I go to the DNA, the DNA results for family uh, connections. Sorry, I'm still drinking my coffee. Um, so I go to my results, my DNA results on that, and first thing that pops up is I see a woman by the name of Susan on there. And it says that she is a she is a, either an aunt, um, 
cousin or I'm trying to remember let me see if I can find it on my DNA right now I'll look at it oh matches DNA matches that's what I meant to say I'm looking at another computer so my other computer doesn't have a camera on it uh, so she's close family to first cousin so I look at it and it says uh, let's see. Oh, with my relationship, she's either grandparent, grandchild, half sibling, aunt, uncle, or niece or nephew. So I'm thinking, okay, scratch the grandparent. I know she's not my grandparent. The name I don't recognize at all. It's the last name of Martin. And there's no Martins on either side of my family that I know of. Uh, grandchild, obviously she's not my grandchild. Uh, half sibling, um, she's, I believe, in her 60s, so I don't think she'd be a half sibling of mine. Seeing as how Michael is the same age as my mother, and they're both in their 60s as well. So she's not a niece or a nephew, because obviously the age difference. Uh, so the only thing she could be was an aunt. It didn't even say half aunt, just said aunt. So I knew Michael only had one brother. So I contacted her on Facebook. I found her on Facebook, contacted her, and I told her that she showed up on my test results and asked her if she was any relation to the Combs side of the family. She didn't know any of the Combs. Um, she did have one common friend on my Facebook, uh, which was actually my sister Amy. Um, the one I grew up with with my mother that I share with my mother and my and my stepfather's her father so I asked her about Amy and she told me she had worked with Amy at Kmart years ago so okay so she wasn't anybody that I knew family wise so I asked her if um, I looked at my results again and it came back that I had a, a half brother his name is John well I contacted him and I said you know I contacted him on Facebook and a messenger and I asked him um, what his story was if he knew who his parents were and he had told me he was adopted so I figured okay well this has got to be the brother that my that Michael had been talking about well, I asked him a few more questions, you know, I asked him if he knew who his parents' names were and whatnot. I said, well, Michael's got to be your father then. And the funny thing of it is, John is only two months older than me. So I thought, okay, well, I don't know how this is possible, but because when I was conceived shortly after Michael had gotten out of boot camp, I figured, from my date, from the dates mom gave me and everything. And I thought, well, if... John was only two months older than me then that would either put him being conceived right before Michael went to boot camp or somehow went while Michael was in boot camp but he was from the same area as, as I was so I couldn't figure it out and I, I had asked him I said well you know your father must be Michael he told me no his, his father's name was Manly Martin well this is the name Martin again so I'm a bit confused wondering where this information coming from because I've always been told my father's name was Michael Combs. Well, I did some more researching and some more DNA results came up. I had another half brother uh, named Michael Martin. And then finally, eventually, um, Manly Martin's test results showed up on mine. He showed up 100% my biological father. So, this threw me for a loop. Um, I John had been in contact with him because John was adopted and he knew who his biological parents were. So he um, contacted Manly, um, Manly Greg Martin, we call him Greg. <coughs> excuse me and he let him know that you know I had shown up on the test results 
so Greg went on to his results and he saw that I was there and um, John had given me Greg's information uh, phone number and I did find him on Facebook so I friended him on Facebook sent him a message and he was very surprised to say the least um, he had two children from a marriage uh, Michael and Sherry Sherry is two years younger than me Michael is a few more years younger than me I can't remember exactly what year he was born so now this puts Greg to having four children two daughters and two sons um, I had actually talked to Greg on the phone one time and I had you know said this is information that I didn't know and he agreed he asked me who my mother was I told him her name he told me he didn't know her the name was not familiar I sent him pictures of her from back then she did not look familiar so I was back to square one where did this man come from you know out of the blue and he doesn't know my mother I called my mother when I got my results and she told me that Michael was my father and there was no doubt in her mind she did not know a manly Greg Martin um, so this went on for a couple of months you know back and forth they didn't my mother and Greg did not talk to each other on the phone or anything or directly I was always the in-between so I kind of went in between and I remember as I was growing up my mother always told me that she liked to go quote unquote hot rodding with the guys you know you get your little fat you get your fast cars and you know you go uh, racing this was you know this is the late 60s early 70s so things were different back then well she told me about a couple of guys names that she used to go racing with I don't know if she actually did racing or she just went to watch the guys with her cousin but she had told me when I was I, I remember as a child one of the things that she had told me was somebody had owned a GTO judge well that stuck with me for some reason I don't know why it stuck with me but um, so as I was talking to Greg a couple of times um, through messenger and through texting he had mentioned that he was the one that owned a GTO judge so I of course you know I'll get back in touch with my mom and I said mom who's the guy that had the GTO judge yeah I remember you telling me about a GTO judge when I was growing up so who was the one with the GTO she said well that was Craig I said mom this is the man that I told you showed up on my DNA that shows as 100% my father I share 49% 49.9% DNA with him well mom's in her 60s she doesn't understand DNA <coughs> excuse me because it's a new you know concept and everything new technology um so she's like okay well if you only share 49% then Michael's the other 51 I said no mom that's not how it works the other 51% is you or 50.1% I said you share 50% from your mother 50% for your father she hasn't done the DNA test yet um, I'm hoping to help get her to do that soon so she can see it for herself um, through the website how it works and where I got my numbers from and my information but she told she told me you know about going hot riding with these guys and everything and then she told me yeah Greg was the one with the GTO so and then she proceeded to tell me that she remembered his father um, he was a photographer and had something to do with TV production in the area so and I had from previous conversations with my brother John and uh, Greg that yes indeed Greg's father um, had been into photography he was a professional photographer and had been into some TV production so it, the story is starting to come together a bit <clears throat> a lot of things are starting to make sense um, 
I have been accepted into Greg's family. I did, you know, as I said, talk to my Aunt Susan. Um, I did find out that I have another aunt, um, Sarah, and I have several cousins and second cousins and a growing family now. Um, my mother still, to this day, this is almost a year into my journey, I found out February 2nd of 2019 and my DNA um, status what I will call my NPE status it's called it, that stands for non not parent expected um, which yeah that makes sense I didn't expect Greg to be my father biological father because I had always known Michael to be my father um, I am very happy to have found out who my father is and find out I do have a family on my father's side who is more than accepting to me they've been great I haven't talked to any of them on the phone but I have most of them a lot of them on Facebook and we you know we do chit chat every now and then I have a message with my brother Michael uh, my sister Sherry doesn't have Facebook so I text with her every now and then um, funny thing is I had gotten a John had had some pictures that Greg had sent him so he forwarded them to me and he sent me a picture of Sherry when she was in high school I believe it was her senior picture I looked at her picture and I looked at my own senior class senior picture from high school we could have been twins um, we grew up within maybe 15 miles of each other when I had talked to Sherry a couple of times messaging and texting um, we had realized that we had went to concerts music concerts at the arena same ones uh, we could have sat next to each other stood next to each other at a concert never knew that we were sisters which is really really odd because I went to a lot of rock concerts back in the 80s and she did too she was as I was I'm being told she's the black sheep of the family um, and I pretty much was always the black sheep on my side of the family and my mother's side so it, it makes sense now um, a lot of things I'm realizing Greg says you know he he does um, accept me as his daughter we text occasionally uh, we don't text all the time I try to keep in contact with him because you know he lives in Florida I live in South Carolina I am originally from upstate New York and Johnson City as I said uh, I've been in South Carolina for almost eight years now and Greg moved to Florida I believe in the 90s 1990s so um, I'm only six hours away from him my brother John lives in Arizona because his family that adopted him uh, his father his adoptive father was moved to Arizona through work so he's he's quite a ways away I'd like to uh, eventually I'll plan on meeting up and seeing you know meeting each other for the first time um, we've been building relationships which is great because now I've got more family to share um, Michael he lives in Florida Sherry lives in Florida um, I have uh, Michael's um, wife on my Facebook as well and I've got two nephews and a niece through them uh, John does not have any children him and his wife and I have three nephews through my sister Sherry now um, and my sister Amy who was my first sister of course that I knew when I was growing up she um, has one daughter my niece Jolene so going from one niece to having two nieces and five nephews was really awesome um, and now they have two new nieces which are my daughters and grand nieces and nephews my grandchildren um, it's been a rocky road, up and down, roller coaster, I'll put it, of emotions going through in my NPE journey. Um, I still cannot get my mother to admit that Greg is my father. She still 
claims that. I should say, she still says that Michael is my father. I truly believe that while my while Michael was away at boot camp, I know their relationship was stressed. Um, things happen. I don't uh, judge my mother for that. I still love my mother no matter what. You know, that will never change who I am. Um, I would like, wish I had known sooner because I, as I said, I'm four, I was 48 when I found out. So 40 is a little old to be finding out, you know, your dad's somebody different and that he would have been there to, you know, be part of your life and share a lot of things with you. Um, I hope I didn't ramble on too much. I just, you know, nowadays I've been seeing so much more on the NPE status. I am in a Facebook group. It's called uh, NPE Friends. Um, Miss St. Clair, she formed it. Uh, we are now up to 6,700 members in the group. She's been on a lot of uh, talk shows. Um, she found out herself that she was an NPE and she knew that there were other people out there, you know, therapists didn't, this was all new. So, you know, family therapists um, weren't very versed into this. So, we, uh, <clears throat> I have a lizard that's crawling on the inside of my curtain inside. He's been my little uh, friend here for a while, a couple months. <laughs> But I keep looking up at him. But Miss St. Clair, she's been great. You know, I, you have to, when you contact the group, um, you have to have a screening to make sure that you are a true NPE. You know, they just want any, just anybody going in the group. It's a private group. But as I said, you know, we have 6,700 people in it now. Um, I'm finding out more people that I know from my home area, hometown, are NPEs either by adoption or the same situation as me where they just didn't know who their biological father was. <clears throat> um, as I said, Michael's family never had anything to do with me. So it's, it's, I, I, well, I shouldn't say never. He had a brother and when his brother passed away, I was named in his will. He was the only one there in the family that had anything to do with me. And that was, I didn't meet him until after his mother passed away. Um, he had, excuse me, he lived in New York City and he had come up to Binghamton to do her final arrangements and that's when I had met him. And I kept in contact with him over the years. Unfortunately, he died three years ago, so he did not know about my DNA status. Um, but he considered me his niece. And I did still consider him my uncle no matter what. He was the only one. He was he, he was more of a father to me than Michael was. So um, I wish I could share that information with them now that, you know, I was not biologically their family. But um, my half-sister that Michael has, she pretty much knows that um, I'm not her sister. I told her my DNA status. I tried getting her to take a DNA test to see if she'd show up on mine, but I don't know if it's money issues that causes her not to, or if she just knows and just doesn't want to be bothered with it. Um, but that's part of my journey, and it's coming up on a year, my year anniversary, February 2nd. Today is January 17th, 2020, and I'm said you know I've been up and down on um, a lot of emotions with this journey first wondering you know I mean I knew Michael didn't want anything to do with me I didn't know why I think a lot of it was he did not think I was his child to begin with and that's why he didn't want anything to do with me but he couldn't come to terms and say anything tell me straight out he would never tell me that I wasn't his child but he told everybody around him and I always felt like I didn't fit in with his family. The ones I did, you know, eventually meet and whatnot. But, as I said, I'm happy to say now I have two sisters and two brothers. I found my biological father. I have two aunts on his side. 
I unfortunately didn't get to meet my grandparents. They both passed away already, which was really sad because I'd really... My, I, I share the hobby of photography with my paternal grandfather. Um, I'm an amateur photographer. I, I love taking pictures and of different things, nature usually. And oddly enough, cemeteries. Um, I am redoing, I've redone my family tree and ancestry. I've omitted Michael Combs. And now I have added uh, Manly Greg Martin and that side of the family, my father's side. So, yeah, I'm building my tree little by little, and I'm finding out a lot about my family now. My paternal grandmother, she was from Russia. So, which, I now I know that I have Russian roots, which I've always felt connected to for some reason. I don't know. I've always felt connected with the Russian and, strangely enough, the gypsies. I don't know why, but... I've always, maybe it's because I've always felt like I was an outsider. I never felt um, really part of anything. My my grandmother on my mother's side, my maternal grandparents, they were the best. You know, I my paternal grandfather, he took on my um, father figure. And God bless him for that. I don't think my grandparents knew on my mother's side about this. Um, I do believe my mother just misjudged um, conception dates and because she told me that I was three weeks early. If I was three weeks early, then that would have put when Michael came back from boot camp or really close to that time. So, I mean, I know it only takes one time to create a child, but I didn't think that you know with the way things she told me things were um i didn't really see that too much i mean he did when he he she told him shortly after he had come back that he she was pregnant um and this was in january i believe or beginning of february she told him they married february 20th of that year and back then in the 1970 you couldn't tell that somebody was pregnant for a few months you know they had to go through a blood test they didn't have you know accurate urine tests to tell um, there were no ultrasounds that I know of to me do measurements so when I was born in September she told me that I was early because my uncle one of my uncles had gotten into a motorcycle accident it was on life support and died three weeks after his accident he died the day after I was born so actually if I was not early that would put my conception date around Christmas time 1969 which does match up pretty well you know as I said Greg has um, come to terms that I'm his daughter they still are I think they you know, I mean, they're up in their years. Or he's in his early 70s. She's in her late 60s. So I think, you know, over the time, she either didn't think that one time would result in a pregnancy. And maybe, you know, she's ashamed of it. She doesn't, I can't post anything on Facebook about my status with her knowing about it because she's on Facebook. She feels I'm trying to embarrass her with her family. Um, my mother's side of the family was strict Baptist, and there are a lot of family members that are on my Facebook. And she doesn't want them to know. Um, I don't know if she's ashamed or just embarrassed. or um, I think she realizes, but she doesn't want to admit to it. Which, you know, I am i don't think in this day and age, nobody's going to judge you for that. Um things you know happen when you're young and I love my mother just as much as I did prior to finding out my information um, I just have more family now to love and to love me um, I, as I said I'm accepted into the family family in Florida family in Arizona and the rest of Greg's family my other aunts and all are up in New York and my cousins and all I'm not sure if there's anybody outside of New York and that are from that side but 
I'd like to get to meet everybody eventually. Um, I'm planning a trip up to New York in June of this year. My oldest is going to be giving birth to her third child. So we're going to be, me and my husband will be going up there to um, welcome the new baby. And uh, sometime this year, my husband and I are hoping to go to Florida to, to Spring Hill to meet my biological father, Greg, and my Michael, or my brother, Mike, and Diana, and my niece and nephews there, and hopefully meet Sherry. Um, Sherry doesn't have much, for, much to do with the family, so um, I don't know the whole story of that. There's some stress there. But <clears throat> I'm hopefully to meet everybody. Um, but thanks for listening. And it, NPE status is more common than people know about. It's nothing to be ashamed of. Nothing to be, not, I don't feel like a dirty secret. Um, I did feel like that for a while. Now I've come to terms with, now I understand why things, you know, things feel more comfortable now. I, I understand a lot more. I understand why things happened the way they did when I was younger. Um, as I said, the only regret is I wish I'd known this sooner so I could have formed a, you know, father-daughter bond a lot sooner. Um, and so we're all getting up in our age and, you know, I, I, I want to meet everybody before I lose any more family. My maternal grandparents are gone. Um, I have one uncle left. Three of them are gone. And I, I still have my mother and my sister and my niece. But I'd like to meet everybody on my father's side before it's too late. But so I'm getting a little emotional. I'm surprised I didn't get emotional sooner. But um, thanks for listening. And um, hopefully I can bring up some more up updates as I get to them. You know, family meetings or pictures or, you know, information. So, um, have a great day and uh, enjoy. Bye. Oh, I gotta hit the red button, don't I now? <laughs>